Okay, what's up you guys? Welcome back to On The Spot Exotics. Um, so this is basically story time just to start off this video. I'm going to finally talk about my accident. Just this one more last time. It's very hard to talk about. I am going to have to put a disclaimer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, there is, it is pretty hard to hear, especially if you're afraid of heights. Um, I will be showing some pictures of the aftermath of when I was in the hospital. I spent eight months in the hospital, six months in a wheelchair. Six of those months I spent in two hard casts in the wheelchair with my legs up. And I was supposed to spend the rest of my life in a wheelchair. But I'm gonna tell you the story of how I got injured, uh, the accident of um, that caused my injury, um, of how I became disabled for life, how I fought like hell to get out of the wheelchair, and how I was inspired to start a YouTube channel, and that inspiration uh, basically gave me the fight to get out of the wheelchair. So I am doing this with my hat off, as you can see. Uh, most of you know I have long hair. I do tend to put it up in my hat when I'm filming. It's just too hard to deal with, with my crutches. Um, just to let you know a little bit about myself, uh, finally I'll let you guys know what my name is. My name is Jarrett, it's spelled J-A-R-R-E-T-T. -T. So, uh, uh, I was, I'm 41, I'm single, uh, and basically I grew up in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, um, just across the water from where Daily Driven Exotics is from. So they're from Vancouver Island. I'm from Vancouver. Uh, I moved to Toronto, here in Toronto in 2005 for high rise window washing. Um, I was originally working at Ski Hills tying rebar. That was my old career, um, basically cement forming for those of you who don't know what uh, tying rebar is. Um, but I basically was tired of working at Ski Hills. The cabin fever was getting to me, even though we had uh, you know, free ski cabins uh, for the uh, the whole time we were working there, which are pretty much like 450 bucks a night during the ski season. So we had it pretty good, but the cabin fever can get to you. Um, so I needed a change in my life. Um, I wasn't, uh, I was living in Kelowna. Mind you, I was living in Kelowna from 2003 to 2005, which is where August Luxury Motors is from, which is where Dave from DDE, got a Squadra Corsa. It's a beautiful town. I, so basically, I was kind of just going stir crazy. Um, I already done everything there was to do in the town, so I decided to make a change. So that change, I decided to move to a big city and take up high-rise window washing. I was working really hard, um, rose up really fast, and was doing what's called chair work, which is when you're on like just a little plank. Um, uh, instead of a big stage. Now, most new people that do that uh, high-rise window washing start off stage and they spend that most of their time doing stage work until you get some seniority, but I have been doing such a good job, they transferred me to uh, chair work. So uh, from there, I was doing great. Um, I don't wanna make this too, too long. So there is car content. Let me be clear, there will be some car content. Stay tuned for that. Um, it's the cold start of the Murcielago, um, that, which is the straight pipe Murcielago that if you check my Instagram, and if you haven't, there will be a link in the description, uh, you'll know how crazy that Murcielago is. So please bear with me um, so I can get through this story without uh, freaking out because it's hard to tell. Um, so yeah, so I had moved here in 05 for highways when we I was doing good in the company, uh, July 4th, uh, 2017. It was also uh, July 1st, Canada long weekend. Uh, but the day of my accident was July 4th, um, which is American holiday. So it was a long weekend. Uh, nobody uh, was around to work at that time. So I offered to take the work because all my family was back in Vancouver. I was in Toronto all by my, I, I'm sorry, I am in Toronto all by myself. Uh, and 
So I took the job that day and due to a negligent property manager, now I can't get into too much, can't tell you where the building is, I can't tell you the property management company, uh, and pretty much I can't tell you too much of uh, the details of actually what happened because it's still under review with the Ministry of Labor. Um, but I can give you the gist and then I'll give you the aftermath. So July 5th, uh, 2017, I'm working. I had finished a 14 story uh, and I was just starting a nine story sub level. Below that's a three story sub level. Um, I can basically tell you that every building that has multiple stories has what's called egress hatches. Um, the property management company is supposed to have those open uh, <clears throat> before the window washers get there. Um, I look down, so I start the nine story. I look down, it's not open. So I asked my coworker, Shane, good guy from Ireland. Um, he's back in Ireland. I feel really bad because he loves Toronto, but it's a whole other thing. Um, uh, so he went to go ask the guy, the guy that was supposed to open it, the property management dude, lives in the building two minutes from the hatch and told my work partner no, because I would have to come back on my holiday day off and lock it back up. And he didn't want to do it for that reason. Unreal. Unbelievable. It still drives me nuts to this day that he gave that answer to my, my work partner. Um, those are supposed to be open. They see what an egress hatch is, is it allows our safe egress back into the building once we're done. So in high rise window washing, when you're, um, instead of, we don't do what's called, we do rows of windows, but we call them drops. So we had finished a drop. So I was halfway through my drop. I looked down, it wasn't open. The guy said he wouldn't open it, which means my ropes weren't, uh, measured out for the three story sub level. It's, like I said, I can't go too much into what happened. Just know because of somebody else's negligence and unsafe practices, basically what happened is, and this, this is the hard part for me to talk about. I fell three stories. I fell three stories and landed so hard. I completely blew up my feet. Passed out from the pain. Completely cracked my teeth. Blew out my knees. <clears throat> blew out my knees. And basically woke up <clears throat> in the worst pain you could possibly imagine. I tried to stand up. I couldn't. A lady, I passed by. She didn't see what happened, but she saw that I was in agonizing pain. So she went and got my coworker off the wall. So it was apparent what was happening. You could see that my feet were the size of footballs. And that landing just, just picture three falling three stories flat on your feet on the pavement and basically shattering your heels and feet into glass. I hit the ground so hard, I f fractured. I broke both the arches flat in my foot, in both my feet. And each foot, I broke my arch flat. Sorry, please bear with me. I'm trying to get through this. It's very hard, but I feel you guys should know what I go, went through to start this channel. <clears throat> and since my dad passed away, I'm not a big crier. I'm a very positive guy. I love to laugh. So just please know that this is very hard to talk about. They called the ambulance. The news copter was overhead. I didn't realize. Um, I will try to, at one point, look for the news um, uh, story uh, of me being put into the ambulance and me laying on the ground. Um, so basically, I'm in the ambulance. 
they kept trying to put splints on my feet, but my feet kept like breaking the splints because they wouldn't stop swelling. So imagine your feet are shattered like glass, both your heels are shattered like glass, and it won't stop breaking because of this swelling. So they bring me to emergency. <clears throat> they don't realize at that point I had what's called compartment syndrome. It's what compartment syndrome is. It's a very rare form of swelling. And basically for seven hours while they waited for the surgeon to come in, my feet wouldn't stop swelling and breaking. So my feet were already shattered into a thousand pieces, both my heels, and it wouldn't stop. They tried everything. They gave me Dilaudid, fentanyl, ketamine, and at that point, I was trying to end my, end my life. Because <laughs> the pain was so bad. the pain was so bad I couldn't take it anymore I've never had a suicidal thought like my life and at that point I was so ready so basically what they did is they put me under until the surgeon came in so the surgeon did the first surgery to drain both my feet they call it a compartmentalized fasciotomy to drain the, the swelling of my feet. So I woke up in uh, the hospital room to my mom walking in. She saw it on the news. Oh, West sitting down to eat dinner. She saw it on the news. Flew red eye, and she was the first thing I saw coming up, waking up from surgery. So the doctor comes in, explains to my mom what happened. Basically, that that there's a high risk that they might have to amputate my feet. I'll never forget that. When you grow up skateboarding and you grow up mountain biking, downhill mountain biking, and you grow up surfing, just the thought of losing your feet is the worst possible feeling. And it's all coming back right now, so please, please forgive me. I'm trying to get through this. So please like and subscribe. That's the end of my story. Now to the cars, now to the cold start with the, the Mercia Lago and a few other sick rides I got to film. Please like and subscribe and um, enjoy the cars, you guys. Peace. And thank you for listening. Thank you. I love you guys. You guys are the reason why I do this. Just please know that. Peace.
Okay guys, doors up. Cold start. <laughs> 